Welcome to another edition of Anglican Unscripted, a special edition. This is episode 869. I'm Kevin Coulson. And I'm Father Argo. All right, as you can tell, this week has been just a week of special guests. We had first on uh, the new Archbishop of the uh, ACNA, uh, Steve Wood, and now we're going to have Father Argo giving us an update. It's been a while. If I remember correctly, the last time I did an interview with you, you were lying on your stomach because you had just hurt your back, falling down some stairs in Iraq. Uh, um, Is that your memory too? Yeah, they had this thing in Iraq where they have uh, like really slick marble stairs and in the afternoon for no apparent reason they water them. And uh, yeah, I went I went flying. So that was excitement. <laughs> okay, well, you've, you've recovered. You're still doing your work in the church. You're in the Middle East. Um, since you and I last spoke, the Middle East has, has gone fire, has gone apocalypse, has gone end times. Uh, Hezbollah, Hamas, uh, Gaza, uh, Israel, you name uh, the big name, uh, they're, they're in conflict. And uh, what, what have you heard over there? I, you know, I've lived in the Middle East for 10 years, and I always tell people, um, if you don't like what's happening in the Middle East, wait five minutes, it'll get worse. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh, so, you know, the fault lines are stretching right now. Um, you know, what Israel has going on in Gaza and Rafa is kind of, you know, moving along. It's, it's putting pressure there, but, but, you know, it's, it's working forward. But the big issue is whether Israel decides to tangle with Hezbollah in Lebanon. That's mm-hmm. what we're waiting for. Because uh, Hezbollah is a thousand times stronger than Hamas. Mm-hmm. Uh, and also... Hamas doesn't really have, you know, many strong allies in the region. Um, they really don't care very much about the Palestinians, really. Uh, Lebanon's a whole different thing. That's 100% under Iran's control. And so if you uh, mess with Lebanon, you're going to draw Iran in. And we really don't know, you know, where that could go. But it probably won't be good. No, that was the same mistake the U.S. made in Iraq. Like the U.S. didn't get that. Um, if you if you touch Iraq, you're going to bring in Iran, and that's exactly exactly what happened. And well, so, really, Iraq Iraq is now a vassal state of of Iran um, because of the Shia majority, and uh, the U.S. didn't really understand that when it went in. What we have right now, as far as I can tell, is a stalemate. Uh, whatever's happening between Israel and Gaza is not happening fast enough, especially for the 24-hour news cycle. Um, and yeah, it's a slow, it's a it's a slow, messy thing. You know, they're yeah. kind of going house to house, tunnel to tunnel. Uh, yeah, this is going to take a while, um, and it's going to drag out. But I think really, you know, that can that's not going to tip the apple cart. Um, it is what it is, but uh, Lebanon could definitely tip the apple cart. Mm-hmm. That's that's what we have to watch. That's okay. exactly what we have to pay attention to. Okay, enough Kevin, enough Argo about uh, uh, international war. What have you been up to lately? Uh, uh, you know, Americans are the most generous people on the planet. Mm-hmm. That is absolutely a fact. But the other reality is Americans generally have no idea what's really going on in the world. Uh, so we, you know, part of what we have to do is tell people. Um, one of the things American believers don't know is that we are living at the time right now of the biggest move of God in history. Uh, it's unfolding across the planet. Uh, the fastest growing country, uh, Christian country in the world right now is Iran. Um, Replacing China. Have, Replacing China. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely yeah. China um, China's interesting. We have, because of the crackdowns there, we've kind of lost contact. 
And it's really, really almost impossible now to kind of count and figure out what's going on. They've kind of gone dark. Mm -hmm. um, we have heard the movement has slowed down a little bit, but we just don't know. Uh, Iran, we know real, really well. So uh, we believe the population of Iran to be 10 to 15 percent Christ follower now. Um, Iran just a few years ago had 75,000 mosques. Today that number is 25,000 and declining. And uh, a recent survey showed that only 42% of Iranians now self-identify as Muslim. That number would have been 98, 99% just a few years ago. Mm, so that's happening. Like we, we can't keep up with the Iranians. They move so fast. Um, and they're, they're the nicest people in the Middle East. They are, they have great food and they are the smartest people in the Middle East. And it, it's a lousy country, but they have great education. They are really, really smart. We can show them something one time and they make it better. Uh, the second fastest growing Christian country in the world is Afghanistan since the Taliban took over. But um, we are seeing this uh, breaking out now in Africa, South America. And we have been saying for years that the same God over Indonesia, Afghanistan, China, Iran is the God over the U.S. and the West. And uh, we are beginning to see this move of God in uh, Europe and coming to the shores of the U.S. right now. Mm -hmm. How many churches would you estimate uh, we have in Iraq? Iran, sorry. Um, or Iran. Iran. Well, our team, we have over 2,000. Mm -hmm. um, we, uh, there are over 2 million house churches mm -hmm. uh, in, in Iran. We know that for sure. So interestingly, Iran is the fastest growing Christian country in the world with no church buildings and no professional clergy. Think about that. And then um, another one for you is, um, I'll probably cause a ruckus here, but 55% of the church leaders in Iran are women. And, and uh, our, our big leaders in the Middle East are women. Um, we have a Syrian, we have several Syrian movements, threads that are all women led. And we've talked about that. Um, why are the gals better at this than the guys? And I think what we've landed on is, um, women there have nothing. So they have nothing to lose. No you rights. Know, they don't. Have, yeah, absolutely. No, yeah. Like, yeah. They, they don't have to preserve power. They don't yeah. have to be in charge. They don't have yeah. to be important because they aren't, and they never have been. Uh, so they just get on with the gospel work uh, with with abandonment and nothing to lose because they don't have anything but Jesus. So they just mm -hmm. go do it, and they're really, really good at it. The women in Iran are unbelievably brave, unbelievably. You know, we, you know, we pull them out and train every month and then send them back in, and it's kind of hard because when they leave, because we know what um, – we're sending them back into, you know, we've had an execution this year. We've had a bunch arrested, uh, interrogated, tortured. Um, so it's, it's, you know, we hug them and kiss them and send them back and uh, just leave them to God and see what happens. Yeah, this church movement that's growing in Iran is not growing uh, in a uh, political covered area. This is a place where uh, the regime is still hostile towards Christians. Oh, across the board. Um, there are uh, 31 states in Iran. We have churches now, and I think 28 of those states. Mm -hmm. We are so it's it's really across the board. Um, we're seeing all the people groups, the the Persians, the majority, uh, the Kurdish areas in the West. So it's just sort of happening, you know, organically. Uh, people there are just completely sick of the regime. And our, our friends there tell us that um, if the regime fell, that Iran would be a majority Christ follower country overnight. Just think yeah. about that. Think about that. <laughs> like they would be an ally to Israel. Yeah. Like think well, of, just think about it. <laughs> you've, come a long way, you've come a long way since the Shah. I mean, if you want to yeah. think about Iranian politics over the last 55 years, um, or yeah. 60 years. It's been one uh, big, violent 
uh, horrible regime. Yeah. yeah. And you know what, what we're kind of praying for is just time, mm -hmm. you know, that, that the gospel movement can just keep moving and ultimately we can take it down from within. So, um, when, when a people group reaches 18% of the population, they become culture shapers. Um, they just become a, a fact that you have to deal with. And we are working towards that number in Iran. You know, we're, 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 we could be getting close. And so it's just sort of a, um, you know, uh, a game of patience to let God do what he's doing there before something really stupid happens. Kind of the same thing with China. You know, China's, China's moving. China mm -hmm. may well be 18% Christ follower, mm -hmm. you know, and then the movement just becomes unstoppable. So we're just praying for, we're praying for time. Um, and then God is moving really, really fast in, in, in that place right now. Well, Middle East countries have the ability to suppress things quicker than a China can. You remember the Arab Spring and the ability yeah. of Iran to uh, violently suppress and shut down the Internet. And you wake up in two weeks and nobody says nothing. Yeah. Iran, Iran is just a, a powder keg, though, because, mm. you know, again, the, the people there are sick to death of the regime. Um, the younger generation there especially has checked out. Um, it's more common for us to lead somebody from atheism to Jesus than Islam to Jesus in Iran now. Mm -hmm. Like we're not playing the Muslim game with them. You know, we come at them as they're atheists. They just checked out. Um, uh, it's a powder keg. We're kind of just waiting for the next spark to see another, you know, uprising. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the problem in Iran, though, is to see regime, any kind of change, you really need the military. And the, the Revolutionary Guard is very much part of the establishment. So I don't see that happening. Um, so we just have to just keep doing what we're doing. You know, just keep moving the gospel, making disciples who make disciples, bring the kingdom of God, and just just keep moving against the forces of darkness from uh, from within. Now, you mentioned uh, uh, some uh, movement in Africa as well. What, what's been going on there? Same thing. We're seeing um, a huge uptick in disciple-making movements in uh, East Africa. Um, we ourselves... Um, the Swahili coast of uh, Tanzania um, was considered just impenetrable, hopeless. 98% Muslim, rock all Muslim. solid. Yep, all Muslim yeah, all the time. Solid, yep. no, no movement, no hope, yeah. no fruit, no anything. Um, and we have um, uh, three big disciple making threads moving on the coast right now. Um, the largest one is being led by the Anglican Church in Tanzania. So we are really what? excited. Hold on a minute. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, we've been, we've been saying for so long that Anglicans can do this if we just get our heads around it a little bit. Um, and the Archbishop of, of Tanzania uh, just sort of gave us a blank slate and said, help, come in, do what you do, and we'll do what you tell us to do. Mm. And um, it's funny because the, the coast are the high churches. Um, you know, if it moves, they incense it. Uh, you know, when I was a vicar general there, I owned more lace than my wife. And, uh, you know, and um, uh, the, the charge is being led by the high churches. They're running circles around the low church evangelicals right now. Mm -hmm. So I'm you know, kind of particularly excited about that. But um, Africa across the board is one of the places that we have seen a uh, huge uptick in movement. That's good. The two, um, the two, biggest, the two biggest killers for movement are, um, honestly, we don't hide that. We kind of keep the numbers quiet. And it's we're hiding it more for, uh, not from the Muslim Brotherhood, but actually from the church, uh, because the two biggest killers of movements are denominations and money. And so uh, we saw that actually in northern Iraq, there was a full on movement going on there in the early 90s. And the American and Egyptian evangelicals came in and killed it dead. 
absolutely. I mean, they drove a, they drove a stake through it and mm-hmm. killed it dead as a doornail. Yeah. And so we have to protect from that. Well, for some reason, people over here in America want to make celebrities uh, of the people who are eva- the ev- evangelists over on the ground. And doing so, you know, uh, ruins it uh, over there on the ground <laughs> in, in a spiritual way here. Disciple making movements, they move on ordinary people mm-hmm. sharing the gospel, making disciples in their ordinary life Mm -hmm. that's how they move and and the gospel moves fastest when it can move naturally through natural social networks so that's where context comes involved um you know we have the first known uh indigenous movement among the mountain kurds right now um uh we're probably pushing about 100 churches there with them first time in history and, and honestly, what we told them is, you know, you need to form a Kurdish church that works for Kurds the way Kurds work. And so we have really no dog in the fight how they do church as long as it's biblical and spirit led. And so we just we bring them to Acts 2, 37, 47 and just say, all right, this is the stuff that church does. Figure out how to do that. You know, listen to the Holy Spirit, follow the pattern, do it. Now, let's talk a little bit about places America has invaded and left. Uh, Iraq, a great example. We were there. um, We exerted our power. We took out the leader. We left a vacuum. Um, How has the church survived or existed since then? Uh, We have two things going on there. Um, So one is we have the, the traditional surface church, the Chaldeans and the Assyrians, um and they've been around for 2000 years mm-hmm. all right uh thomas the apostle planted the church there um uh he was obviously a pretty good missionary because all assyrians are christian uh i've been to the cave where he lived mm-hmm. and uh you have to remember there too that that 2000 years ago is not a long time ago it's like grandma knew thomas like they 50, know the 54 generations they they know the name of the couple that came with them from Jerusalem, mm-hmm. all right. And I've been to his village. I've been to the cave he lived. You know they're roaming around. But um, so at the time of Saddam, there were uh, two million traditional surface uh, believers, Chaldeans, Assyrians in Iraq. Today, probably best number is about one hundred and thirty thousand, and they're vaporizing. They're, they are just, what's happened is they are leaving as fast as they can leave. So there's just not going to be much left of them. They're noisy. Um, you know, they can raise a ruckus, but they're just dwindling in numbers. They're moving as fast as they can possibly move out of there. Uh, but the, the underground church is in ascendancy. So what we're seeing is that the, the surface church is in tremendous decline but the underground church, the house church movement, is uh, multiplying. So it's going to look very different. It's going to look really, really different. Uh, let's talk about Afghanistan, invaded first uh, recently by Russia, uh, then by uh, America. Uh, how's the church holding up there? Growing wildly. Um, again, Afghanistan is the, the second fastest growing Christian country in the world that we know of. Uh, and once again, the women are leading the charge in Afghanistan also. So, um, you know, what we see is sort of, you know, eventually people kind of get, when they see Islam come to its logical conclusions, um, the people start getting sick of it. So, I mean, honestly, the best evangelist for Iraq was ISIS. Yeah, or proto-evangelist. Um, the same number as in Iraq. Only, only four, Iraq is the largest Muslim country in the Middle East. Again, only 40% of Iraqis since ISIS now self-identify as Muslim. Mm-hmm. So they, they see where this leads to and where it's going, and they decide that's really not a, a great thing, and they went off the train. Yeah, l- tell me a little bit about the, the specifics of how we evangelize to uh, the Muslim, to people uh, uh, of an Islamic faith. Um, a big stat I can give you is that um, 
eighty um, percent of people who accept Jesus globally, it comes from healing and deliverance. Mm -hmm. So if you're a cessationist, you're probably not going to do real well on our team. Um, and so uh, we don't play the Muslim game. Uh, I don't want to talk about the prophet. I don't want to talk about the Quran. I want to talk about Jesus and get them in the word. And so like a kind of a normal thing, and we just teach all the locals how to do this really, really simply is, um, you know, we go into the house, uh, we call for the sick, uh, the sick get healed. We share our testimony and share the gospel. It's really simple. And, and uh, a really hugely important thing too is movements move by very simple, easily replicable uh, tools. And so the first thing we have to do is throw away the discipleship manuals. Oh, I you can't a, do that, Jerry. We've been working on that for 2,000 years. I think I we finally got it right. Manual, like 500 pages, and we have a program <laughs> and a plan, you know, and that just doesn't multiply. You have to, you know, one of my rules is that it's, it's, um, it's not a good tool or lesson unless the dumbest person in the group can do it. Yeah, it's usually me. You know, so so it has to be really, really simple because it has to be easily replicable. We had a we had a Iraqi group that was just struggling, struggling, struggling. They weren't getting it. And uh, we brought in a local to help work with us to figure out what the problem was. And then he found it. It was their discipleship manuals. We didn't know they had them from another church. And we just collected them all and threw them in the garbage and said, we're not your only manual is the Bible. And then we're going to give you some really simple tools that you can pass on generationally. And, and so that's the key. You know, the it honestly doesn't matter um, how many people I don't care about how many people you baptize. I don't even care how many churches you have that doesn't that's not exciting. The, the proof of movement is how many generations of disciples have you made? Like that's a question the ACNA needs to ask itself the way we've been planting churches, how many actual generations of disciples have you made? That's the only stat that matters. Mm -hmm. And you're, and you know, when you're, where, when you're starting to be, move on generation three, four, like a church that's planted church, planted church, planted church. Now we're getting somewhere in Iran. Uh, we've reached generation eight. So church that's planted church, planted church, planted church with the Syrians and the Kurds were probably about generation four. So the whole key to it is generational reproduction. And that happens with simple tools in the hands of ordinary people following the Holy Spirit and doing the stuff. All right. So your average American here thinks they know everything. OK, uh, we're fully we have the Internet. We have computer. We have CAD programs. I watch CNN all the time. I'm up on my international politics. We would probably surprise people here who are watching uh, this, but did they know that Turkey has invaded Kurdistan? Oh, gosh. Um, it was funny. Back in 2017, um, we were like full on invaded yep. by Iran and Iraq. Like tanks rolling in. And absolutely nobody in the U.S. had any idea. Like I'm sitting here watching the tanks rolling in and like nobody back home has any idea what's going on. Uh, so the same thing right now in Kurdistan, uh, Turkey has uh, attacked northern Iraq. So that's Sinjar, Nineveh, Kurdistan over uh, 800 times this year. Turkey has 40 operational bases in Kurdistan. They've been in Kurdistan building roads for their invasion. And then uh, just last week, uh, two divisions. So that could be anywhere from 10 to 20,000 troops rolled in with air support. Uh, 160 villages have been evacuated. Another 600 are under threat. Um, we have two teammates right now trapped up in the mountains. Um, they can't get out because if you get on the road, Turkey drones anything that moves. So they're kind of trapped in their house watching the fighting right now. So it's a pretty big deal. Yeah. But, uh, no, it's not because it's not on the news. Hey, clearly right. it's the, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's not a big deal. <laughs> we, uh, we don't know about it, so it's not happening. Yeah. You know, um, like Turkey, 
Turkey could take Kurdistan anytime it wants to. Mm. Uh, and, and I've long said um, Turkey is probably a bigger, the NATO country, right? Turkey is probably a bigger problem than Iran. Um, Turkey has, has the best air force in the region. Um, they probably have the best army in NATO, mm -hmm. including the U.S. Yeah. Um, U.S. military is kind of in disarray right now. They are formidable. And Iran just wants influence. Like they don't want to actually run Syria, Iraq, Lebanon. They just want to influence it. Um, Turkey wants territory. Well, Turkey's the bully right now. Yeah. In the Middle yeah. East, Turkey is the bully, and uh, Turkey is the most militant, in my opinion, yeah. right now. Yeah, and they're they're really really bad. Uh, Erdogan's full on Muslim Brotherhood. Mm -hmm. um, they're very aggressive. Like we're we're just waiting for them to invade uh, Syria. Um, the the eastern quarter of Syria. It's called Rojava. It's under Kurdish control. Turkey hates the Kurds. Uh, they're planning to have elections. If they have elections, that will give legitimacy to the government, the regime. So Turkey has said, if they hold elections, we're invading. If Turkey invades Rojava um, full on, we could be looking at 3 million refugees crossing to us within about 72 hours. That's my nightmare scenario, mm -hmm. and that could very easily happen. Uh, in 2019, uh, Trump just pulled back. Um, the U.S. said that they left Syria, but that wasn't true. We were in Syria. The U.S. was there. They just pulled back. <laughs> we, we passed the U.S. troops. And when the U.S. pulled back within 24 hours, Turkey invaded about 30 kilometers and we had 900,000 displaced people within 24 hours. Mm -hmm. So the, you know, the, the biggest source of sort of instability for us in the region is definitely Turkey because they want territory. Mm -hmm. Like their stated objective is to rebuild the Ottoman Empire, all right? Just go Google Ottoman Empire, right? And just <clears throat> look where, where it was, and that's what they want, all right? And they've said they're coming for it, so... That's our NATO ally right there. Isn't that where the Palestinians get? Ah, whatever. Uh, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So, yeah, yeah. so people watching this program, we you have a, you know, thousands. How can they pray for you and uh, support you and contact you? Um, you can go to our website, lovefortheleast.org. Be in touch. We'd love to hear from you. Um, just pray for, uh, pray for our local leaders first of all. Uh, I mean, that everything hinges on them, you know, pray for their holiness, their boldness, wisdom, discernment. Um, you know, one thing that the persecuted church, I mean, we are the persecuted church. The, the, the persecuted church never, ever asks for prayers for safety. Mm -hmm. They don't want that. Like, we have to pray for what people want. And what they always ask for is just boldness and courage. So especially pray for the leaders who are always under threat. Um, our biggest uh, Iranian leader is stateless and kind of running all over the Middle East right now, um, kind of on the run. And uh, so it's a hard road for them. So just pray they persevere. Uh, you know, pray for more persons of peace to emerge. You will open doors for us and pray for um, what we call super sharers. So, um, you know, how this really works is you do all this disciple making stuff and it's a lot of hard work. You know, it's just training, 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 training. It's grunt work, you know, um, and then one day you hit on a super producer and they will run out and plant 100 churches in about three, four months. And oh, it just works that way. It happens here in America, too. Every once in a while. You get that person who can plant churches and who can uh, has that charisma about them. Uh, yeah, and you just you just ride that horse. Like, yeah. and they, but the thing is, the super producers, it's not uniform, but often they live at about generation three, four. Mm -hmm. So you have to do a lot. The hardest thing in the world is to go from Gen Zero to Gen One. 
that's that took us seven years right and and then when you get to gen one then you can move to gen two it's a slow it's i cannot tell you how hard it is it's just drudgery and um the problem with americans is we have the the patience of a gnat you know and and we just want like a program a website and and god just wants relationship and this is all about just staying at it in relationship with god doing the next right thing the next thing he says for us to do um like 90 percent of american missionaries don't complete their first term in the field like we have the highest attrition rate in the world sure and and so like americans you know to to see revival and renewal um we really need some um stubborn perseverance you know it's not easy it's not fast it's not a program it's not slick uh it's not a software program or a facebook page you know it's just really it's walking with the lord abiding in him and just staying at it till you hit but then when you hit katie bar the door like it, it we say go slow to go fast yeah you're gonna go really like we did we got nowhere for seven years and then we hit we just stayed at it and we hit and then we hit the super producers and once you got them like you're just it's a tiger by the tail mm. and it, then it gets fun i want to thank you for your time and your encouragement to uh those of us here in the west who uh sit and watch our our news and we think we got it covered um it, it's good to hear that uh and this is the time you know the middle east is the place but this is the time uh, you know, this is the answer to prayer of generations of Christians. How can we finally get into the Middle East? And it, it's happening. And I think it, it's uh, it needs to be said within the Christian community. Finally, well, we've been praying for harvest. Hey, okay, huh? guess what, friends? The harvest is here. Huh? But I also want to say it's absolutely starting to hit in Europe, and it's it's starting now in the U.S. as well. We have about thirty known movements here in the United States. Mm -hmm. that are beginning to multiply so it's on our shores as well um so what we have been praying for is happening but we have to learn how to steward what god is doing mm. yeah we have to learn how to work with what how he wants to do it yeah absolutely thank you so much for your time and i pray for your your steadfastness my friend god bless <laughs>